Hello, greetings! Uh, having set up our linear programming problem for example 1, uh, this is our multi-period uh, scheduling or multi-period uh, production problem, um, we're going to jump over to Excel uh, and solve it. Okay, So if I jump over to Excel, I've, I've set a couple of things up. Um, so I set up a basic table, um, so for each month, uh, I list the number of permanent employees that we have, which is 10. Uh, the production rate of our permitted employees in terms of units per month. Okay, then in terms of variables, right? We have uh, temps hired at the start of each month and temps fired at the start of each month. And so since these are variables I'm solving for, I just start with initial guesses. So I just put one in for hired each month, uh, and then fired I had zero for month one. Right? Remember, we're going to assume we're not firing any at the beginning of month uh, month one, and then uh, the month. Uh, the employees fired at the end of the other months. Okay, total temps we'll calculate in a second, um, but then the uh, production rate of our temps in terms of units per month is 10. Uh, another variable we're solving for is units stored at the end of the month. So you had to come up with initial guesses. I just said 1, 1, 1, and 0, assuming we didn't store any at the very end. Uh, the cost to store uh, per month, $50. Cost to hire a temp and the cost to fire a temp. Okay, those are costs are fixed. Okay, so what I'm going to do next, okay, remember we had a little uh, employee balance. So in terms of calculating the number of temps at the start of a month, it just made it easier to write our constraints. All right, so these are our variables at T. Uh, and again, we assumed that we couldn't, or we weren't firing any employees at the beginning um, of month one, and we can look at the effect of that on our uh, balance later on. Okay, but uh, total temps, uh, at the beginning of month one, okay, would just be the amount um, hired. In month two, would be the temps that we started with um, that are, so we would start with the number of temps that we have carrying over from um, month one plus the amount that we hired minus the amount that we fire. Okay, then likewise in month um, three, I would have however many temps I started with from month two plus the amount hired minus the amount fired. Okay, And likewise, uh, month four, I'd have however many um, temps I started with, which are carrying over from month three, plus the amount hired minus the amount fired. Okay, And so our objective uh, slash goal is to minimize our variable cost in dollars. And so remember that was equal to, uh, so that's a pretty long cell, so let's put it down here. So that's going to be equal to, um, so in a, a given month, we'll have the number of temps fired, or, yeah, number of temps hired times the cost to hire. Okay, and actually, um, since the cost of hire is the same in each month, I'll just do cost of hire times um, number of temps hired in month one plus month two, plus month three, plus month four. Okay, plus, okay, the cost of fire, it's the same, so I'll have the cost of fire times uh, the number of temps fired, uh, so we, we'll ignore month one, because we'll assume that we start with no employees, so we have none to fire. Okay, and we can look at the effect of that, but we'll have the amount fired in month two, three, and four. And then we have our storage costs. So we'll have the um, cost of storage month, so it's the same, times um, the unit stored at the end of month one, plus the unit stored at the end of month two, plus the number of units stored at the end of month three. And we'll include month four in there, and we can play around with, with that effect. Okay. All right, so then in terms of constraints, okay. I can spell it right. <laughs> um, so our big one is we're going to have demand. So I'm going to label our months, month one, two, three, and four. Okay. And I, I probably should have added our demand. Let me just put it here. Okay. So our demand in, in units. Okay. So our demand in units was the 520, 720. If 
520, 720, 520, and 620. 520, 720, 520, 620, okay? So in terms of constraints, okay, so as I set them up, our, our demand constraint, okay, on the left side, left-hand side of the equation, um, we have the demand for a given month, which we interpret as a number that need to be delivered, plus the unit stored at the end of the month, okay? That's the left-hand side. And on the right-hand side, we had the... Um, number of permanent employees times uh, the amount of units they can make in a month plus the total number of temporary employees times the number of units they can make in a given month. Okay, And in month one, we're, not, we're starting with an empty inventory, so we're not going to have any in, in inventory to begin with. In month two, okay, on the left-hand side, we'll have our total demand, what needs to be delivered, plus what's um, left in storage at the end of the month. On the right-hand side of the equation, we'll have what can be produced by our permanent employees plus what can be produced by our um, temporary employees, so that's the total number of temps, times uh, their production rate, plus we're going to have um, what was in storage at the beginning of the month which is equal to what was in storage at the end of the previous month. Okay. And so these should look very similar. Okay, so now getting to month three, we're going to have the demand for month three plus what's left in storage at the end of the month on the left. On the right hand side is um, what could be produced by our permanent employees plus what can be produced by your temps, okay, plus um, we're starting with the units that were in storage at the end of the previous month. Month four, okay, demand for the month, plus, okay, um, what's stored at the end of the month, okay, remember we left a W4 in there, and on the right-hand side we'll have what could be made by our permanent employees, plus what could be made by our temps, so our total temps, by um, the rate, plus we'll have what was in storage at the end of the last month. Okay, and that should be it. Um, so we have our objective, um, so we defined our parameters in the table, and then, um, yeah, our demand constraints, and then the only other one would be our non-negativity constraint when we solve. Okay. So if I solve this, so solver, I want to minimize that by changing. Uh, let's see if this is where I need to maybe rearrange my cells, the way I have things set up. So my variables are um, number of temps hired and fired plus the unit stored. Okay, so I need to rearrange things slightly. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert a column to the left and I'm going to cut so control X unit stored okay and delete that so I look at my objective right it just updates the unit stored to now uh, column D okay so and I need to do that because, in, um, at least in LibreOffice Calc, when I want to minimize that cell, I need to be able to hire all or highlight all the variables I want to change uh, in one swoop. Okay. And then all my constraints are left hand side is equal to right hand side. Okay. And then under options, uh, LibreOffice, I need to check 
uh, assume non-negative. Okay, and if I solve, um, what do I get? So I get um, a cost of 19500 I'm going to check to see if that's the solution that I've given you. Come on, where's my cursor? There we go. So 19500 all right, so our cost is 19500 Okay, so it looks like we hire um, 50 employees at the beginning of month one. Okay, then we don't hire in any subsequent months. Uh, and it has that we just fire five uh, at the end of May. That allows us to meet our demand. Okay, then the other thing is, let's look, do we have any in storage at the end of month four? Okay, so at the end of June, we have none in storage. And we said we wouldn't expect to have any in storage um, because it would make no sense for, for that not to be zero. And looking at the objective function we're trying to minimize since W4 uh, is just a, a cost, a positive cost, and doesn't come off anywhere. Um, so that all looks good. Okay, the only thing that, that looks odd okay, is that when I look at uh, the total number of temps is that we're ending our fourth month and we still have 45 temps. Okay, and so you know how we could try and look at this then is um, so I don't need to worry about W4, right? That works out to be zero, um, but we could look at the effect of uh, it's I3. Uh, I3's cost to store firing is K. Yeah, okay, so the cost of fire, so my objective function I have, you know, I'm going to fire, you know, this number of employees each month. Okay, what we could do is we could make sure that at the end of the end of month five, we need to fire the total number of temps um, that we had at the in month four. So we want to make sure that at the end of month four, we fire all of our temps. So all I did is add to our objective function uh, in this variable here, which is accounting for the cost of firing employees. Uh, I'm going to add to it the total number of employees we have at the end of month four. Okay. So now if I solve it again, okay, my solution is exactly the same. Okay, it hasn't changed at all. Um, it's just the um, price has gone up, okay, or the cost has gone up, but you know this distribution hasn't changed uh, whatsoever. Okay, you know we could look at this uh, another way. Okay, so let me change that back. Okay, if we could add another constraint to force our total number of temps. How would we want to do this? We can't make. This is where it becomes a little problematic, right? So when I when I added that cost to fire then all my employees at the end in my objective function, all it did is increase the cost. Um, I can't really add a constraint that the total number of temps at the end of month um, four is zero the way I set the problem up um, because um, it, of how I set the problem up. Right? All it would do is it would just um, increase my cost by a constant um, where I forced them all to be fired. Okay, so changing my objective function to require that they're all fired at the end of month four um, didn't change my variable values at all. All it did is increase the cost. So that was question one that we had pro propo uh, proposed before. Um, the other thing was, you know, we could include, you know, an option that you could fire employees at the uh, beginning of month one. And so if I were to do that, my total temps would be uh, amount hired minus the amount fired. Okay. And actually, I think I already included it. It's just it wasn't dependent on anything. All right. It's already included in one of my variables. So if I include you know, the number fired and that temps at the beginning in solve, all right, I, I still get the same thing. Okay. So um, it doesn't matter if I include in the total temps um, the fact that I can fire some. Okay, and I take it back. I should include it then in in here. All right, I would need to add an F3. Okay, but if I were to allow temps to be hired or fired, um, 
at the beginning of month one, it, it doesn't change anything. Just as when I you know include this, the cost of firing all my temps at the end of month four doesn't change the value of my variables. All it does is change the, the final price. Okay, so there you have it.